So, treasury method diluted shares outstanding. Here's how you calculate diluted shares outstanding using the treasury method. The reason why this is called the treasury method is because this assumes that the company will use the treasury stock, that they have, which is basically shares that they have repurchased, and they will issue that in lieu of cash for the option value. So for instance, let's say this, the management team is provided with a certain number of options from the, from the company. So let's assume now in this sample calculation that they are given 10 options, 10 options, the exercise price for this options is $45, which means that the management team has the right, but not the obligation, to buy 10 shares at $45 a share. The current market price of this stock is $100. So, if you were the management team, what would you do? You have the right to buy a share or buy an asset at $45. The value is $100. If you were to buy it at 45 and sell it right away for 100, how much money do you make right away? $55, 100 minus 45. So if the company now is issuing these shares to the management team and the management team is looking at this and they're saying, fine, I have 10 options at $45 a piece that I gotta pay. If I buy it, if I exercise the right to, to this option, then I will effectively pay the company how much money? I, the management, will pay 10 options at $45 each, and that equals $450 that the company will get as proceeds. Now, the management team, let's say they exercise this. They have to come up with $450 that they give to the company. And then their value that the management team would receive is $1,000. Why? Because 10 options, which now became 10 shares, worth $100 each, 100 times 10 is equal to $1,000. So the profit, so to speak, that the management team will get for their good work is $550. They get $550. Now, if each stock is worth $100 in the current market, as we've said. What are we going to do? $100, $550 is how much the management team should get in total. What is the share equivalent? The share equivalent, in other words, the management team is supposed to profit by $550, but instead of the company giving them $550 in cash, what we do is we assume that this is a cashless convert or a cashless exercise, and the company will basically, instead of issuing or giving them $550, they will give them 5.5 shares. So in other words, you take the 550 divided by the 100, and you will get a total of 100, uh, a total of 5.5 shares. Now, in theory, again, to reiterate this, the management team, in theory, should be indifferent between receiving $550 of cash or 100 uh, or, or 5.5 shares, which are worth $100 each, because in theory, they are both equivalent, assuming, of course, the $100 stays at $100. So therefore, the share dilution, the assumed dilution is 5.5 shares in this particular example. So putting that into concrete words, how do we do this now for Excel? Because what we don't want to do, we don't want to come up with this particular calculation every single time we're looking at different options. It's a long calculation and unnecessarily uh, difficult. So with that in mind, here's how we can very easily do that. Take a look at this max, op max function that we have down here, max zero options, etc. Uh, let me explain this formula to you. It's actually not that difficult. So. Let's start with the first thing here. We have the exercise price. Let's start with what's inside the parentheses. The parentheses is the exercise price, which is how much at this point? It's $45. So this is $45. Now, what is the current price? The current price is $100. That's the 100. So 45 divided by 100 equals what? This equals 0.45. Now, Let's take a look at the next part of this equation. We have one minus this particular quotient. 
So 1 minus that, 1 minus 0.45 equals 0.55. Now, how many options do we have? We had number of options, we had 10 options. So now you take 10 options, multiply by 0.55, and what do you have? You have 5.5 shares. That is how you would use this formula, and all you need to do is input the exercise price and input the current price. Now, that's how this formula works. The last part of this formula, why do we have this max zero? Well, it's pretty straightforward because what if this $100, what if the stock price was not 100 what if it was $20? Would you, in a rational financial decision, exercise these options? You probably wouldn't. Why not? You have the right to buy one share at $45 a share. So you pay $45, but it's currently worth $20. So if you were to sell it for $20, you lose money. So whoever's holding this option, what chances are they would not exercise this, which simply means that these options are out of the money. If they're out of the money, they do not cause any share dilution because there's no additional shares being issued. So again, no additional shares being issued if it's out of the money, no share dilution. So how does this max zero take care of that? Well, let's take a look at this. If this $100 stock price instead was $20, take a look at what happens. What's the current exercise price? The exercise price is $45. What's the current price? The current price is $20. That number, that division, that quotient equals somewhere around, let's say, a little over two. It's greater than two is, is the important number. Now, if it's greater than two, or specifically, it's a number greater than one, what are you going to do when you take one minus a number greater than one, what are you going to do? You're going to get a negative number. So once you get a negative number, and you multiply the number of options, which is 10 in this case, it doesn't matter, you multiply a negative number by any number that's not negative, you still get a negative number. So once you take this negative number, and you tell Excel, hey, listen, take the max of either zero or this negative number, what do you think Excel is going to do? It's going to come back and tell you, let me take zero. So if it says, take zero, that means what? There is no share dilution. There's no additional shares that would have been issued had the management team exercised these options. So from that perspective, the share dilution you'll see is zero here. Let's see how this particular formula, this max function, is applied to this particular analysis. So in C18, I'm just going to very quickly copy this formula down so that we can take a look at it as with the explanation. So this is saying take max of 0 or C9. What's C9? C9 is number of options. That equates to this part of the formula right there. And then it says take that, C10. What is C10? C10 is the exercise price of $45 which is here in our formula. And then it takes the current price, C11, that's the 20 bucks. That 20 bucks corresponds to this current price. And therefore, when you look at this, again, it's taking the 45 divided by the 20. That's a positive, that's a number greater than one. One minus that will give you a negative number. Max of that negative number times zero, you're gonna get zero. So that's exactly what this particular formula is doing right now.